Welcome everyone. Happy to be presenting to you today. I'm Tracy Herr. I'm a senior escalation engineer here at Microsoft. I'm also the lead for North America for the Teams device escalation team. And I've been working with voice and Teams and Skype and all the telecom things for over 20 years. I am a Microsoft certified trainer. So I do this quite often. And if you want to hit me up on LinkedIn at, or, well, it's not Twitter anymore, but uh, there's my information. So today I'm going to be talking to you about how Intune works with our team's devices, which also includes a little bit of conditional access. I'm not going to lie. It's not a little bit. It's a lot of conditional access and in tune because they work so tightly together. The first, we're gonna take a look at a high level of what it looks like when you're signing into a Teams device, a phone, an MTR, anything that is running the Android operating system. So first, we're authenticating using Entra to do our registration, which also includes going through conditional access so that we can get authenticated. Then we're registering using Intune, creating a device object in Intune, and then we're finally getting over to Teams. When we are going through that process and we're getting through conditional access, we're checking for cloud apps, which our Teams devices, they use Exchange, they use Teams, and they also use SharePoint Online. So if you have conditional access policies that target cloud apps like that, and they might also target the Android platform, those existing conditional access policies will affect our Teams devices. So we need to do something special, like maybe use a scoping filter to exclude or include our Teams devices. And then once we go through all of those, we're looking at what is going to grant us access. What are the rules and conditional access that are going to grant access? So here in this example, we're looking for the device to be marked as compliant. And then if the device is compliant, we are granted access through conditional access. So conditional access now has to go check in with Intune because Intune is responsible for marking any everything whether it's compliant or not compliant, Intune is responsible for that attribute, populating the compliant, non-compliant attribute. So we're checking in with Intune. We're going through the compliance policy. We're checking if the device is rooted. We're checking for a minimum OS version. And if we don't meet those, we're marking the device as non-compliant. Now, this is going to send that information back to conditional access. And because the device is not compliant, it is not going to be signed in because it's not going to pass this control that so will not be granted access. Just another view of what I just went through. And this is kind of in, I call this inside your phone or inside your MTR. We have a Teams app that we are trying to sign in with when first thing you see is the authentication code, go to aka.ms forward, forward slash Teams device, something. Well, whatever that URL is, I should know it. Um, so we're signing into the Teams app. Then we're going over to enroll with the company portal app. So there is two apps installed on these devices. The company portal app has two pieces. It, it has the broker authenticator piece, and then it also has the company portal. So the broker authenticator is responsible for authenticating to Entra using our token issuing service, ESTS. So that's how we get our authentication tokens. Then we use our Azure device registration service to do a workplace join. Workplace join is creating a device object in Entra. So now that's your first device object that you're going to get created. And then we're enrolling into Intune. Now this creates another device object. It's called a, an enrollment object, actually. 
So we have our device object in Entra, our device object in Intune. Now we come back around to our Teams app and we do our provisioning using the admin agent in the Teams app to create a third object in Teams Admin Center. So we have three that we need to watch out for. So let's look at some more Intune things. A little bit of fundamentals currently, and I'm going to stay currently because of my next slide is what's coming. But currently, we are using the Android Device Administrator platform. And yes, this is legacy. And yes, Google wants it deprecated completely. Right now, we are still using it. Our OEMs are still using this platform on all of our team's Android devices. So we need to allow this platform in Intune so that we can sign in and enroll into Intune with our Teams devices. The Android Enterprise platform, this is for mobile devices. We will never use the Android Enterprise platform for our Teams devices. The difference is the Android Enterprise platform contains the Google Play Store and you can download and install apps from the Google Play Store whereas the Android Device Administrator platform does not contain the Google Play Store. Coming soon, very soon, we are going to be using the Android Open Source Project platform for our Teams devices. This is going to be replacing the Android Device Administrator platform. So, this also requires a firmware update for all of our Teams devices. So all of our OEM manufacturers have to be ready with their new firmware that works with Android Open Source Project before we can flip the switch over to this uh, platform. So Android Device Administrator platform is gonna be around for a little bit more, but coming this year, we are going to have this available. All right, some more Intune. So Intune, we have to do the enrollment first, right? So we're this is what the enrollment flow looks like. When a user signs into the Teams device, we have to authenticate into Entra. We're checking the license state. If a user has an E5 or, or some other license bundle, we're checking to see if it contains an Intune license. We're using the Azure Device Registration Service to register into Entra, which creates that device object. Then we are registering with Intune, and Intune provides us an enrollment certificate. When it's doing this, Intune is checking the enrollment restrictions. So the enrollment restriction policy has to allow Android Device Administrator, otherwise we get blocked. Hey, Tracy, there was a quick question yeah. before we go on. Um, you mentioned that there is, that Google's forcing the change, right? Is there a deadline associated to that? Uh, well, from Google's perspective, it's already passed. But <laughs> exactly. our OEM manufacturers have licensed the platform from Google for an unknown period of time, and they are responsible for that uh, version of Android operating system. So they're allowed to do whatever they want to do. So, so it depends. In other yeah, words. it depends. We're okay. trying to get off of it as fast as we can. Absolutely. All right. Thank you, Tracy. So uh, a lot of customers can enforce the enrollment of a device just by using conditional access. You may not know that you are forcing enrollment into Intune because it's just conditional access. And it's this one checkbox in your conditional access policies require the device to be marked as compliant. This forces the device to then go to Intune and try to enroll. And if the user is not is licensed with an Intune license, it will try to enroll. If the enrollment 
restriction policy is not configured right, it will fail to enroll and then fail to sign in and get pushed back to a login prompt. In some cases, in a lot of cases, the device will be unusable and need to be factory defaulted after you have your policies set correctly in order for sign in to work. There is no option around this. Uh, other than removing the Intune license from the user account that's trying to sign into the phone. But if you do that, that would also affect their other devices, their cell phones, their laptops, they, those other devices that you do want to manage in Intune wouldn't be able to be managed if you do that. Some things to think about while we're going through this session just a couple questions, and you'll have this slide deck you can review later, but it's important things is like, why would an administrator block Android device administrator platform? Well, it's because Google has publicly stated that it is deprecated and they don't wanna be using it anymore. And a lot, a lot of Intune administrators know this, and cell phones do not enroll under Android device administrator anymore. So uh, it's very common that Intune admins would block this. Uh, firewall ports, you know, you don't think about having to open or whitelist URLs or certain ports for Intune for a phone. You're, it's a phone, right? It's a desk phone. Why would I need to whitelist Intune? So that's another thing. It's publicly documented. We have to make sure we're allowing that. Checking for license status, uh, checking for device enrollment failures, which I'm going to show you that in our live demo in a little bit. And if you reach a device cap limit, which there are two areas, one in Entra and one in Intune, where you have device limits that you can configure. And you can hit either one of those limits, which will then block you from signing in. And how does the device authenticate to Intune? We went through that. If you need a refresher, that's in the first two slides. And then of course, what happens when the device fails to enroll? The user gets pushed back to the login prompt and we don't get to sign in. Intune has three different policy types that we are concerned with. The first one is a configuration profile, not to be confused with the configuration profile in Teams Admin Center. They're both called configuration profiles, but they are two separate, completely separate things. The configuration profile in Intune is what you would use to push an app down to the device or push a certificate down to the device, maybe even push a password at the operating system level. This is something you would do on cell phones or tablets or something. We cannot manage our devices at the operating system level for any type of password security with our Teams devices. We manage our devices at the Teams app level using the Teams configuration profiles. It is not recommended to be using configuration profiles with our Teams phones or Teams MTRs because we may push something down to the device that will break it. We also are concerned with compliance policies. Not all compliance settings will work with our Teams devices. So you might have you might be checking for different things for compliance for your cell phones, your Android cell phones. Uh, you can't check for all of those things with the Teams devices. We have a table that is published that tells you which compliance policy settings will work with our Teams devices. And app protection policies. App protection policies are really similar to configuration profiles where they're pushing certain things down to the device. Um, app protection policies are not supported with our Teams devices at all. They will break the device. It, it will cause the devices to sign out. <laughs> so do not use app protection policies with our Teams phones or Teams Android MTRs. 
like I was saying, not all devices support all compliance policy settings. Some phones even cannot handle a compliance policy setting that is checking for encryption. Even though the device does have encrypted storage, the attribute inside of the device that would send it up to our cloud to Intune to say, yes, I am encrypted, it's not there. So it's just that it can't communicate with Intune properly to let Intune know that it is encrypted. So there's little caveats to some of these. Um, we use assignment filters in the Intune compliance policies to either include or exclude from compliance policies. And this is good because we do this based on manufacturer and model number for our team's devices. So we're not targeting, we're not accidentally excluding cell phones. Uh, we don't have audio codes, cell phones. We don't have, Poly doesn't make cell phones. So it's, it's very uh, easy to exclude our team's devices using these attributes. And now we get to go to conditional access. So this is what conditional access is doing when we're trying to authenticate, right? So we have Entra ID, we have Intune. Entra is working with our token issuing service, which is ESTS, token issuing service. So we're getting our tokens, authentication tokens from, Int, uh, from Entra, and we're ch getting checked for compliance by Intune. And we're also using our device side auth. The device side auth is the little code that you see on the phone or on the device that you would be typing into a web browser to sign in. Now Intune is responsible, completely responsible for the attribute called is compliant. So even though conditional access is checking for compliance, Intune has to have that device enrolled so that it can check for compliance. So if you're trying to check for compliance with conditional access, but you're not enrolled in Intune, conditional access is not going to let you in because it can't, because Intune can't check for compliance. So Intune can't mark that attribute as compliant equals true. And so conditional access says, well, I don't know if you're compliant or not, so I'm not going to let you in. The device that you see on the device that works with our token issuing service and Entra is called a device code flow, which is a part of MSOL. And if you feel like reading about that, it is uh, super exciting. <laughs> that was sarcasm. Uh, so we do have a built-in exception because if you're trying to require a device to be compliant, but the device has never signed in yet, so it's not enrolled, the very first time that a device signs in, there is an exception for this require the device to be compliant. So if if you're if you factory default the device, you're going to be back to that very first time. If you take it out of the box, you're back to that very first time you're signing in. So you get this exception to prevent the chicken and egg scenario where, oh, I'm not, I'm not compliant, so I can't sign in, but I can't get compliant because I haven't enrolled. So I need to enroll, but I can't enroll because I need to be compliant. There's, we have that, that exception built in to prevent that. We are recommending to use device filters. Filter for devices is a setting inside of every conditional access policy and almost every conditional access policy existing for managing cell phones or tablets or even, even Windows devices could possibly affect our team's devices. So we, we tell every customer Check your conditional access policies, the existing conditional access policies. Check if you see if you have any unsupported settings for the Teams devices. If you have an unsupported setting for the Teams devices, your environment is configured in an unsupported way for the Teams devices. And to get your environment 
to be configured in a supported way, we use a filter to exclude our team's devices from existing conditional access policies. I promise you, if you're having problems with your team's devices today, you put these filters on your conditional access policies with unsupported settings and all of your problems will go away. Okay, most of your problems will go away. This is what a filter for devices looks like when we are filtering. So in some cases, uh, you, you definitely want to use model and manufacturer, but these attributes get populated by Intune and conditional access happens first on a sign-in. So we also, in some cases, this depends on your environment, Sometimes we need to put the display name so that we can pass through conditional access. The device object gets created with the manufacturer's name first. Then once it enrolls in Intune, it changes the display name of the device object. So these display names would be invalid after it's enrolled, but then the model number and manufacturer attributes would be populated at that point. So then it would, pass through on these. Every time it's asking for a renewal authentication token, it's coming back through conditional access. And this happens every few hours. It depends on the situation. It could be as much as every 15 minutes. Approved client apps is a, it's a grant control and client apps in conditional access is unsupported for our team's devices because we don't have these things. We don't have browser, mobile apps, desktop clients. We don't have Exchange Active Sync or other clients on our team's devices. So this will cause problems if you have conditional access policies configured to have client apps and then to require client apps. We're moving away from this uh, in March, 2026 and moving this over to app protection policies, which are completely unsupported for our team's devices anyways. But if you have this configured, the way to fix it is to filter for devices. We want to exclude our team's devices with the filter. Okay, so now we are going to come over here and we're gonna take a look. So in Intune, what are we really looking for? We are looking at our devices here. We're coming to Enrollment, coming to Android, and we are checking for our device platform restrictions. We're also checking for device limits. So these two things are really important to us right now. We need to make sure that we are allowing the Android device administrator platform here, allow. We can block personally owned devices, but that means that you would need to put the serial number of each of your team's devices, your MTRs and your phones into Intune so that it could get marked as a corporate device rather than a personally owned device. If you don't want to do this, at adding a serial number into Intune, then just um, allow personally owned and it's less, less uh, of what you have to worry about. Here is our device limit by default. It's 15 and you cannot increase that 15 in Intune. In Entra, you get more than just 15. And this may be able to be increased with PowerShell, I'm not sure, but you cannot increase this more than 15 in the portal. So th that's what we're concerned with for enrollment. For compliance, we come to compliance, mm -hmm. We want to make sure any Android device administrator platform 
is configured in a way that we can, that will work with our Teams devices. So just taking a look at this policy here. All of these settings might be okay. Oh, nope, not this one. Requiring a password to unlock a mobile device. This is password things. We can't manage passwords at the operating system level, so we can't check for this. So this policy would need to be filtered to exclude the team's devices based on an assignment filter. And within this same portal, we have conditional access. And our policies here, conditional access, tons of policies. One of these may or may not be okay for our team's devices. Just take a look, grant controls. This is not supported. This is not supported. So I, I need to now filter on this policy because I can't check for these things with our team's devices. So I would, I would then create a device filter over under conditions. And I would add that device filter here. Unfortunately, we can't just add a global filter and then apply it to every conditional access policy. Uh, we can't do that currently. You also need to look out for session controls. A lot of people like to configure periodic reauthentication. This is allowed. Um, this one would be unsupported, and this one would be unsupported, but this sign in frequency is supported. So I'm going to say I want to periodically force my users to reauthenticate every eight days. Now, that just means that the token that you got from conditional access and to the token issuing service is going to be revoked in eight days and your team's phone is going to sign out. So because of sign in frequencies, you may be experiencing sign outs, random sign outs. Our devices do not work very well with these, this periodic reauthentication. You would want to put a filter for devices to exclude the device from any policy that has the sign in frequency. All right, let's come back over to here. So some best practices for what we need to do to keep our devices working properly and up to date. We have uh, we have the option to do automatic updates in Teams Admin Center, where if you use the validation ring and we put out firmware or a new Teams app, you'll get that immediately. If you do the general, you'll get it in 30 days. And if you do the final, it'll be deferred by 90 days. We also recommend using a configuration profile to configure, to, to schedule a daily automatic app restart. So you can configure that to happen after business hours. This keeps your devices working as in the best way that they can. And we put out updates for our Teams phones and Teams Android devices almost every month. Um, maybe, I think last year we did like 10, 10 updates. So your device can be outdated very quickly. And if you're experiencing a problem, we probably already fixed it in the last update. So always keep your devices up to date with the latest firmware and Teams app if you're having any issues. These are some of the screenshots of what you would see when you are having a problem. The first one, could not connect to workplace join. Contact your administrator. This is a very common one. Workplace join happens when you're trying to go through the part of the sign-in process where you're talking to Entra and the token issuing service and the Azure device registration service. 
you, it's trying to create that device object in Entra. And that's what the workplace join is. So you will get this error if there's a problem with conditional access, not letting the Azure Device Registration Service create the device object. So we got to go check conditional access if you see this error. Workplace join equals bad conditional access. Something is wrong in conditional access. The next one, this device does not meet your organization's compliance requirements. Compliance requirements is the key word here. So Intune is re responsible for checking for compliance. So we know from this, we're gonna go check in Intune. And the last one here, could not enroll in Intune due to device limit. So that's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, we we're hitting the device limit in Intune. We need to go delete some stale device objects in Intune so that we can free up that limit on the user. Okay, more demo. Making it, making it real. Something that we have in conditional access is called the what if tool. So when you're accessing conditional access, you click on what if and come here. And this is going to check the user. Check my common area phone user for any conditional access policies that would affect this user. So I come down to the bottom, I click the what if button and it says policies that will apply. No policies, that's great news. I am free and clear. Conditional access is not going to block me, or so I think. Conditional access policies that will not apply, great, okay, not really worried about that. However, please note, and this is important, the what if tool checks for the user account what policies will be applied to the user account. It does not check which policies are going to be applied to the device object. We don't have a tool that is going to check which policies will be applied to the device object. And the device object in Entra authenticates differently and conditional access handles the device object authentication a little differently than it does a user account. So even if you think that the policy might not being a might not be applied to the device object. It still could be, but this is also a good place to check to start troubleshooting. We also use this tool troubleshoot plus support. This is really great because it tells us, do I have an Intune license? Okay, excellent. I know that I have an Intune license, so I can be checked for compliance. Great. Come over here to devices. I get to see, am I getting marked as compliant by Intune? Am I getting marked as compliant by Entra? Which really just means conditional access gave you the green flag to be compliant. So you do have both of these and both of these need to be green or you have problems. So that's another really good place to check. And then of course, the sign in logs, which I come over here to Entra and I come down to sign in logs. When you're looking at sign in logs, we like to check for the user sign in non-interactive tab because when our devices are requesting tokens to stay authenticated, the user is not there forcing that to happen. So it's non-interactive. There's no interaction with that phone but from the user. So all of our authentication is gonna get logged under the non-interactive tab here. And if you have problems, you may see failures in here for when the device is trying to stay authenticated. Also, when you're signing in, the audit logs are a really good place to check. You'll see things in the audit logs from the device registration service, you'll see when devices are, uh, sorry, device objects are deleted 
or if a device object is getting marked as no longer compliant, our device registration service is doing that. So this is a great place to check. You'll also see in here if you sign in and then it immediately fails to sign in, you'll see the device object get created and then deleted immediately. And that is also our device registration service that would be doing that. And you would see that happen in here. Okay, so not interactive. We went through that in live demo. We might see things here in our sign in logs like failure. The refresh token is invalid due to sign in frequency checked by conditional access. This has revoked our token. So we are now failing to sign in. You will see this in the sign-in logs, the non-interactive sign-in logs. You'll also see things like your device is required to be marked as compliant. That means that Intune is not allowing this device to be compliant. It's checking for something that isn't working. So we check for Intune issues here with the configuration in Intune when we see something like this in the sign-in logs. Also the sign-in logs, on the conditional access tab, well, it'll, it'll tell you. I'm hitting this policy, the conditional access policy called Teams Phones, and it's requiring the compliance, and it's hit, it's doing a sign-in frequency, and it's failing. So we know we hit that with our Teams device object. And if you drill down a little bit into that policy, I just this is just a screenshot, but you'll see this is my device object and it says not matched. This is, does not happen all the time. We get to see about 80% of what's happening with our Teams devices through the sign-in logs. The other 20%, you can't see. We see this error a lot. This is not really an error. This happens with multi-factor authentication. You'll get a 50199 in the sign-in logs. It's okay. It'll pass through once you go through MFA. MFA is supported for our Teams phones and Teams displays. It is not supported for our Teams Android MTRs and not supported for our Teams uh, scheduling panels. The scheduling panels that sit outside the conference room, they do not support MFA either. We do have a script, and you'll have the link for this, that will check your environment for unsupported settings for your conditional access and for your, your Intune policies, anything existing. And now this is a, just a screenshot of what it looks like in PowerShell, but now you can export it into a CSV. You can take it back to management. You can say, look, the, this team's device status says warning or unsupported. So all this policy over here is unsupported for our team's devices, it'll tell you. And it'll give you the reason why. For the warnings, it's usually MFA and that's because some of our devices support MFA and the others don't, so we say warning there. But if it says unsupported, you would need to put a device filter on that policy to make it supported for the Teams devices. And here are all of the Learn pages that reference everything that I have talked about today. You'll have access to this deck later and also some of the troubleshooting uh, blog articles that I have written. You can also watch the micro learning videos that me and Michael Tressler made. If you're trying to troubleshoot whatever's happening, it's like five, three to five minutes for these micro learning videos. And the first two videos are how to configure your Intune, how to configure conditional access, how to configure trusted locations properly for the Teams devices, good things to watch. And do we have any questions in the chat? 
I think the moderators have been doing a pretty good job. I don't know, guys, are there anything that's like outstanding there um, that we need to have Tracy kind of walk through? Tracy, there was a question earlier about Okta. Can you speak at all about having uh, an interop between Okta and Azure AD? A little bit. So Okta is, it's like ADFS. And with ADFS, we have to do some special things to allow the device registration to happen through ADFS and through the on-prem environment. Okta is similar, where you need to allow that device registration to pass through. And I don't know the exact configuration in Okta, but it is something that you need to be worried about. And if you're configuring Okta and you want to use that as your identity provider, work with them closely to make sure that all the things for devices and device registration is allowed. <laughs> 